Hello, my name is Nico Schüler from Texas State University, and I will talk about orientation processes and perspectivism in music analysis. Um, today, we have a vast array of musical elements that uh, relate uh, to, or a vast array of elements that relate to music, and we also have a vast array of analytical methods. Considering musical elements, perhaps we can distinguish those uh, here on the screen. Analytical pursuits can be undertaken targeting any of these musical elements or a combination of them. Analytical approaches or methods can target specific musical elements or they can emphasize a particular procedure or method. Uh, common general approaches to music analysis are these uh, that are on the screen. The list of specific approaches and methods of music analysis is very long. And um, you don't have to uh, read all of them. Uh, just, you know, uh, I just uh, put them up here to get an idea of the vastness of analytical methods. With a great diversity of music from various time periods and geographic locations, with a long list of musical elements that can be the focus of music analysis, and with a long list of music analytical approaches and methods, I believe Werner Stegmaier's philosophy of orientation might help us navigate the vastness of music, musical elements, and analytical approaches. As I quote, orientation involves finding paths through the terrain of all the circumstances. End of quote, that is uh, Stegmaier quote. Uh, I uh, presented a more extensive version of this paper in Belgrade last year. Uh, this short version provides a few key thoughts of Stegmaier's philosophy of orientation to music analysis and, and um, some, a couple other examples. So Stegmaier's philosophy of orientation. Stegmaier published his monumental philosophy of orientation in 2008 and a shorter English version in September 2019. My quotes will all come from this letter English language edition from 2019. Uh, we require orientation uh, wherever we are and whatever we do. Uh, if we analyzed a piece of music that we have never analyzed before, we need to orient ourselves. But any orientation, I quote, is preceded by other orientations. Orientations are always reorientations, end of quote. Werner Stegmaier's goal has been to investigate the conditions and structure of human orientation. And his philosophy of orientation, I quote, clarifies how individuals, despite their different orientations, are nevertheless able to find hold within their orientations successfully, communicate with each other, and at the same time, continually renew their orientations." End of quote. But orientations may also fail and thus fall into disorientations, but usually we can regain orientation. What is orientation? Orientation is, I quote, usually understood as an achievement of in finding one's way in a new situation, end of quote. But orientation really precedes all definitions because we need to have already been oriented in order to define something. Orientation becomes questionable when we don't succeed, which means um, when we are disoriented. This point is especially important for any research in which our goal is originality. We want to pursue a music research project that nobody else has done. Uh, we want to answer research questions that haven't been answered yet. While we use prior orientations, original research requires new or reorientations. Stegmaier provides a three-step explanation. In the first step, orientation is the achievement of finding one's way. Uh, 
And the second step orientation is the achieving of finding one's way in order to find promising opportunities for action. And in a third step, orientation is the achievement of finding one's way in a situation to make out opportunities for action to master the situation." End of quote. If orientation is initially unsuccessful, we start looking for clues. In music research, and especially in music analysis, we may look at successful analytical studies. Even if uh, our analytical object is a different piece of music, possibly by a different composer or even from a different time period uh, or geographic region. But we then still have to find our own way and must consider our specific circumstances. We must ultimately orient ourselves in on our own. If an orientation is preceded by another orientation, it is temporal. Of course, we know this from music. Music is also temporal in itself. Often we run out of time when pursuing an analysis. I once analyzed a piece of music that was as part, uh, as part of a composition competition composed within 60 minutes, received 60 minutes of rehearsal time and was then performed. My analysis, however, took many hours and was still incomplete. Of course, we know that there is not enough time for a complete musical analysis. Stegmaier continues, I quote, it is the basic condition of all orientation to operate under uncertainty. The, uh, the certainties of an orientation are its own certainties, which were initially acquired under the condition of uncertainty. It is persistent. It is the persistent risk of orientation that uh, something new could always come up that is relevant and that was not seen before. And orientation consists of dealing with this risk. Orientation as a temporary orientation copes with this risk uh, by relying on something only for a time or only until something else comes up." End of quote. We orient ourselves in the musical analytical process. Uh, we rely on our previous orientations and we encounter new music, new musical circumstances um, or uh, a new analytical approach, etc. When we rely on previous orientations and we are certain to do the right thing, we are relying on plausibilities. I quote, plausibilities are assumptions that are not in need of being justified. They are, in a word, self-evident. Every orientation relies on what it regards as plausible or self-evident, end of quote. Plausibilities are usually not explained. If they are explained, plausibilities become questionable, which we can see with the current discussion on Schenkerian analysis, especially the connection between Schenker's known views on white racial supremacy uh, and his theories of music. Before this issue was brought to light in, a keynote, in the SMT keynote by Philip Ewell, Schenkerian analysis was a plausibility usually unquestioned when used. And with this example, we can see that if plausibilities become questionable, arguments are needed to justify the plausibilities. As far as I can see, courses on Schenkerian analysis are now being revised everywhere in the US. Arguments are to make, that is a quote, arguments are to make something clear, arguments are, to make something clear or explicit, which was obscure or implicit. But what was plausible for one person may not be plausible for another. Therefore, one argument may convince one person, but not another." End of quote. If we convince ourselves or others, arguments and argumentations become or return to plausibilities. This is exactly the case in any research, except that in research, we more often than in real life make plausibilities questionable on purpose. We should explain, make explicit our plausibilities in the music analytical process and make them thus questionable. But we can do so endlessly. However, plausibilities and plausibility standards in music analysis have hardly been 
addressed. Stegmaier's philosophy of orientation deals with standpoints and footholds. It allows for a variety of possibilities. Therefore, it is perfect for applying it today's, to today's plurality of music analysis. Plausibilities are accessible through language and the phenomenology of music analysis is complemented with the phenomenology of the language of music analysis. Although we only require orientation when dealing with a new situation, in music analysis, we practically always deal with a new situation because we don't always analyze the same music or the same musical elements or using the same analytical method. When we encounter or enter a music analytical situation, I quote, it is initially unknown that will be of concern or what will be of concern or of interest in it, end of quote. We must find out about it. The, I quote, situation is not limited, neither in space nor in time, end of quote. We may consider other elements previously not considered. That is why in music analysis, elements such as historical, social, political, psychological, etc., may change the situation both at the time when the piece was composed or later when the piece was performed or now when the piece is being analyzed. None of this information is irrelevant. What is most crucial here is that we have to consider other elements or perspectives previously not considered. My practical suggestion is, as I recently tried in my methods and methodology of music analysis course with graduate students, to go through a process of formulating research questions from various perspectives. It forces a, a reorientation process and the questioning of conventions. For example, my students formulated the following questions related to harmony, and uh, I will also show a slide to melody regarding the lead, Wenn ich in deine Augen sehe, by Robert Schumann. So you just, um, you're probably just reading a few of these questions, get the idea of there is a vastness of questions and here are questions related to melody. And some are somewhat trivial, uh, some are interesting, and some are questions that we usually don't ask. Of course, one can expand this to other music, to all the other musical elements. So this is by no means any complete list. The possibilities, um, I uh, switched early. The possibilities of asking questions are manifold and extensive. In Stegmaier's words, I quote, the situation of orientation can eventually be defined only negatively as that from which nothing may be excluded as irrelevant, end of quote. In the situation, we are open to all and everything. The orientation then limits the situation that is being explored, or it may broaden or shift its focus at a time. I quote, in the situation of orientation, the present consists of relevant matters from the past for the future, end of quote. And in the situation of orientation, we can adapt to change. In any orientation, we deal with contingencies, which means we encounter surprises. In music analysis, such surprises can be harmonic progression, um, not or less frequently encountered before, a unusual rhythmic or formal structures, different use of motives and themes, or even an entirely different kind or style of music, etc. The list is endless. These surprises or irritations, agitations, or unsettlements, as Stegmaier calls them, create the need for orientation. I quote, agitation or unsettlement is the basic mood of orientation, end of quote. Um, in my methodological writings related to music analysis, I have been insisting on the importance of formulating goals and research questions before pursuing the analysis. But orientation does not begin with such goals. Orientation, I quote, begins with the viewing of the situation in order to look for promising options and opportunities for action, end of quote, which Stegmaier also calls finding meaning. 
Once we have an idea of promising options and opportunities, we formulate goals. That means we decide on goals. We decide for some goals and thus against others. We look for an overview of the situation. When, we view, um, when the view is unclear, we are unsettled. When the view is clear, we are calm. However, when the view is clear, we only pay attention to what is in sight. When something becomes clear to us, we lose sight of other possibilities. Stegmaier points out another paradox. When we try to see the bigger picture or the big overview, we cannot focus anymore on something specific. We see everything and nothing. And we focus on something specific. If when we focus on something specific, we exclude everything else. An old saying is that we can't see the forest because of all the trees. That is why different perspectives are necessary, different degrees of the overview, different views. We also need to do this in music analysis. We need to change perspectives. We need to change the focus, degrees, and angles at and from which we look at music. Most importantly, we will have to find the connections between those different views, perspectives, and oscillations. Werner Stegmaier uses the, term, the terms horizon, standpoint, and perspectives in his philosophy of orientation as classical terms. The horizon, meaning a limiting circle, limits an overview. Without going into detail, the horizon helps us distinguish between center and periphery. The horizon is, I quote, a spatial boundary, but only for a certain time. It is a moving boundary. Horizon is where orientation ends, but behind every horizon, a new horizon arises." End of quote. The standpoint is, I quote, the metaphorical point one stands on in a horizon and from which one uh, sees and understands what one can see or understand within this horizon. End of quote. We can enter or adopt a standpoint, but we can also leave or abandon it. This even allows for multiple standpoints. If we have not studied a particular music analytical approach or method, for example, it is outside our horizon and we will not be able to use, the, uh, use it for our orientation. If all we have always done is pursuing one kind of analysis, it determines our limits. Stegmaier points out that science, art, and religion, I quote, create much larger leeways in the engagement in their objects, end of quote. Science can distance itself from the everyday need of survival and can take on a theoretical point of view, which means that the observational standpoint by itself uh, may by itself not be part of the observed world. Science can design theories which limit the use of science with rules and definitions. I quote, in contrast to science, art expands the use of science in a way that makes it fluid, bringing about creative disorientation. It enriches human orientation through fictional orientation worlds. End of quote. Since our scientific focus on art, uh, or since our scientific focus is art, music analysis should either focus on those or reorientations that attractive musical works are based on, which means the creative processes, or it needs in its approaches and methods constant reorientations to capture the artistic reorientation. Artistic orientations and reorientations invent something new. As such, it is different than everyday orientation. And in contrast to science, which limits the use of science, art aims to constantly change science and limits. I quote, art composes surprising orientation worlds, end of quote. Therefore, music analysis must also focus on the fluidity of science in art must focus on the orientations that enable the changing world 
the changing music worlds, and it must focus on the elements of music that change to make art surprising. Music theory um, that focuses on a set of rules in perpetuity will fail. It needs to focus on the changing of rules, on the changing of the musical elements, etc. And because artistic reorientations receive strong influences from the, uh, from the everyday world, we must also look at those elements that are less pure musical elements, social, political, psychological elements, etc. Final remarks. Uh, many processes in pursuing music analysis require orientation. And you have um, a list here, choosing the music, formulating research questions, deciding on the best sources, choosing suitable analytical processes, keeping in mind the balance between objectivity and subjectivity uh, in the approach and method or method, hypothesizing on analytical elements, collecting appropriate data, balancing the focus on various musical elements, deciding on when to end data collection, because we are at some point out of time and have to finish up, accepting, rejecting, or modifying the hypothesis when reviewing analytical data, repeating previous steps if necessary, evaluating data, deciding on which data to use for the presentation or publication, deciding on a presentation balance for various target groups, finding suitable modes of presentation of analytical results, critically reviewing both methods and results, and providing a critical outlook etc. The success of our music theoretical or analytical endeavors depends on our orientations uh, in our globalized, multimodal, interdisciplinary, and ever more digitized world with a sheer vastness uh, of um, music and with a sheer vastness of research methods. We will professionally only move um, with our time if we reflect on our current orientation skills and develop new ones. Uh, and um, I just want to say, of course, that um, uh, the uh, philosophy of orientation by Stegmaier is a monumental work uh, that uh, has many more uh, concepts and ideas in it. And I was only able to uh, present just a few of those um, but there is much more uh, in it that uh, would be very useful uh, to apply to music research or music analysis in particular. Uh, there is some of the literature uh, that I used and I look forward to our discussion. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>